Why running big bluffs on low stakes, mid stakes and most of the stakes does not work in the real world is the main topic of this video. Let's crush. Remember a couple of weeks ago I shared a video where I was explaining this concept in theory and I was sharing the reasons why. I'm not going to get too deep into that, just watch the video, we're going to be displaying it somewhere here. And in this video, I want to share a hand example. So I have this spot here in the big blind. Um, great dent is folding. He just got seated. So don't get confused. We defend from the big blind and the board comes king, deuce three. We're playing a heads up pot. He calls. We're back to flush draw over core card. We can still be good. Of course, we call. Turn. We keep calling. He's going to have a lot of bluffs with ace four, ace five, jack tens. He's going to keep barreling on, on the jack, on the ace quite often where we win. Probably not bad, bad betting ace four on the ace river, but if he has something like ten nine, eight nine, he's going to um, keep barreling those. And then we just call down. Also, the flush, of course, very strong. So we call. And I was wondering in this spot, and something I analyzed, <clears throat> what would be my bluff jams? What would be my value jams? Of course, if you river something like eight deuce in spades that we could potentially have, king eight in spades, maybe a low frequency pocket eights. I don't think it's such a terrible call on the turn just because he has so many bluffs. But point remains, let's say if we have something like ace deuce on spades, right, where we block pocket deuce, if we have something like ace eight in spades, where he barrels his pocket eights or whatever, or we have something like <clears throat> queen jack and clubs, queen ten and clubs, right? We float the flop and then maybe we want to turn into bluff, blocking his king queens, blocking his pocket queens. So I was just curious, what is our strategy supposed to be here? And first, let's look into the just pure GTO solution. And I just gave it for, for one, one sizing on the river. Of course, he will have some overbet ins, but just assuming he's going to be using one sizing, uh, the sizing he's using here between two third and 75% and pot. Um, but again, it's just to show you how much the, the players in the real world differentiate from an idea strategy and how it impacts our strategy. So let's assume he is value, he's supposed to value bet king nine, king tens, um, all the strong king x, and he's like he's even supposed to value bet king nine, king ten, all the king jacks. Bluffing with a lot of a size, as you can see here, bluffing with the weak flush draws, if he barred 10, 9, jack 10. So quite aggressive strategy on the river. Against that, we're supposed to bluff raise the queen nines, it's queen jacks, not really, queen ten and diamonds we're supposed to bluff. We're not going to have a lot of raises here, it's just very little, um, because we would usually raise already earlier, so we're just going to mainly have bluff catchers here and just a few bluffs. Because also there's not so much behind, right? He gets an, if we jam, he gets an incredible price on his call. So that's why, just, no. That's why we don't want to raise a lot. If we river two pair here, we raise it for value uh, eight three eight eight do suited. So, and my theory is that just picture, especially when you're deeper in a tournament where people get a little more scared. People don't value bet king nine here. They don't value bet king ten as much as they're supposed to, right? Even the king jack offs, a lot of people are just too afraid to put in another value bet. Because we're also not perceived having all these offsuited king x, right? We might not defend king seven off, king six off. So this is where a lot of players are just, yeah, taking the safe line and check, especially when you're then, again, in a deeper in a tournament. So now I have adjusted this a little bit and I say, okay, he's checking the king tens, king nines, and he's betting like around 30% of the time with the king jacks. Uh, I removed a few of the bluffs with the A size. I think people are not so aggressive with those. Still a bunch of bluffs with these A size here, as you can see with the weaker A size, seven, six, six, five, four, five, if he gets to the river with, he's bluffing those and value betting ace, king, king, queen. So he's still having all these bluffs and we can see we just wanna be bluff catching for the most part. And we see it shows the queen 10, but look at DV, look at DV on the bottom right. So queen 10 suited on the bottom right here, minus 85. Same for the queen nine. If we get to the rope pocket eights, of course we raise. Why is not king eight in there? It's actually funny that king eight, we want to start leading on the river here, which is very surprising to me. But once villain bets so little in position, start checking back more, we want to start having a leading range, which is quite interesting. And this also shows the point how crazy this game can evolve if you play against a passive opponent. Let's say you play against a record, you know he's not going to put in the, the value bet with ace-king. I mean, I've seen crazy checks with ace-king. It's not that they're going to bet this 100% of the time, they get paranoid. 
But again, he's betting 100% of ace-kings and around 30% with the king-jacks. So this is pretty realistic assumptions. And against that, we see, if I change the strategy, we're essentially having zero bluffs. Every, this is just, I would say, a display over here that it should just still shows it as, as uh, some race. If I would let the sim run a little longer, it would also show these as just either pure calls or pure fold. And uh, probably mixed between calling and folding. Because, um, I mean, we already see here that basically never really wants to race. And the longer I let the sim run, the, the, the closer it gets to zero and then it becomes call or fold. Because you see minus 85 raising versus seven calling. So it's clearly worse um, than calling. And the only real value hand we're raising is pocket eights. I mean, eight deuce, eight three is, is possible, assuming he's calling all the ace kings. I think for that price, people are not folding ace kings. I mean, we see that actually we make him fold ace kings quite a lot. We even, he's supposed to fold king queen. Actually, that's quite interesting, but yeah, I don't think people are gonna fold king queens here, of course. Again, if you don't let this run longer, it's also gonna get 100% call. You make him fold aces in there. No, you don't, you're not gonna make him fold aces, of course. So you're not making any, in fact, you're losing money with those crazy bluffs, right? So this is where, and I also think that sometimes he would be overshoving, so ace king might not be in the small sizing. So it's gonna be often probably like some king jacks, aces, some thin value bets. But long story short, you see just by removing the king nines, king tens, and if you say, no, Ben, on my stakes, they always go for these thin value bets, you might be right. I can just share my experience in these spots that people are too afraid. If you ask me, Ben, what's your, what's your, one of the top three why certain players are stuck on low and mid stakes versus high six players is that a lot of these players from low six mid stakes are not capable of going for thin value. We need to consider this. Remember, for bluff race, you want to attack the part of thin value bets because that's where a lot of your EV comes from, that you fold out these thin value bets. Now, if they're not in their betting range in the first place or to a lower frequency, then of course the EV of your raises goes down. It might be different in the earlier stages, people are a little more uh, stickier, but then also you might get more hero calls. But then especially in the deeper stages of the tournament where it gets to the money, where more is at stake, people might be a little more shy. So you're actually bluffing into, or a little, they're a bit more careful, you're bluffing into much stronger range. And this really hurts your EV, it really hurts your win rate. Especially in an environment where people are co big calling stations, so they bet a lot of good hands and you're basically having 0% forward equity sometimes in a lot of these spots. So keep that in mind. I hope I was able to give you some insights on that. Of course, you might disagree with some combos here and there. Even if it might be a little bit better, you're not gonna make any money. It can even be more pessimistic and you might be losing more money. I think you get the point. I think that's quite, quite realistic. I mean, betting flop, betting turn on a very steady king high board. When you face another triple barrel, it's usually very, very strong. So. Keep that in mind, guys. I hope you have enjoyed this piece of content. Let's see if there's anything else that is outstanding. I don't think so. I mean, a bunch of, yeah, low frequency hero calls here on the river with like a jack, twos and spades, etc. But in general, just, uh, yeah, I think uh, I think this is more realistic that we basically never want to value ra bluff race here. We just call and we have some value race with eight, eight deuce, eight three, pocket eights. That's pretty much it. Let me know what you guys think. I hope I was able to illustrate my point from the previous video. I remember one of you guys in the comments have has um, requested this kind of video. So I thought, okay, let's look for a spot and maybe um, make it more clear, make it more vivid, vivid. And you can apply this concept on a lot of different other spots, whether it's even, um, yeah, especially, I think especially raising, especially against raises, of course, uh, against bets when you raise yourself because you want your opponent to have all these thin value bets. That's why you see more crazier bluff raises on high sticks because it also makes sense because high stick people have more thinner value bets. All right, hope you guys enjoyed it. See you next time.